hello everyone uh, so we'll continue from where we had left off last time so we had managed to find out this uh, uh, this integration with the ddt in front uh, rewritten in terms of this uh, this particular integration and as we had mentioned last time the plan is to substitute this particular term uh, back here and uh, and then proceed so we'll do exactly that so uh, so what we have now is row dvdt is equal to row b plus TDS, the surface integration and this can be rewritten by taking the volume integrals to one side we take the row common dv dt minus b vector dv is equal to the surface integration t vector ds now in order to establish the connection uh, between the between the traction vector and the stress which was our original plan what we'll do is we will apply this equation to a very special kind of geometrical figure and the motivation for that will be moment uh, will be it will be clear uh, in a moment uh, after we have actually drawn this figure so let me first of all draw the 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 tetrahedron and uh, and then you will uh, will see now why we are considering this kind of a special figure and please note that this uh, special tetrahedron is uh, is written is, is drawn and explained in almost all the textbooks of mechanics of solids uh, uh, irrespective of the fact whether they mention the connection with fluid mechanics or not and i believe that even in your fluid mechanics you did come across this tetrahedron but uh, but we'll draw it uh, again and we'll proceed with the explanation nonetheless okay so so first of all we set up our coordinate axis like this so let's say this is our x1 x2 x3 and then let's draw a tetrahedron here Okay, uh, let's name the vertices like this. Uh, so, this is O, this is A, this is B, this is C. Okay, now uh, our plan is like this. We will consider each of these triangles, triangle ABC, triangle OCB, triangle OAC and triangle OAB individually and we are going to consider the unit outward normal to that separately as well as one generic traction vector uh, lying on that plane. So first of all for our triangle ABC. So let me draw this unit outward normal. Uh, depicted by the n hat the traction vector on this let it be denoted by uh, this traction vector t now what I will do is I understand that very formally this traction vector will have a dependence on the position vector of the point on which it is being drawn as well as on the unit outward normal to the plane on which it is being considered. However, in order to uh, 
to have a little less clutter as far as the writing is concerned uh, i will only i will i will assume that the dependence on the position vector of a generic point is implicitly understood and uh, instead write only the explicit dependence on the unit outward normal like this and i will write a sh little shorthand for this in this fashion so this will be considered to be equal to t hat uh, t vector subscript n so this is for the triangle abc next for the triangle ocb now you note for the triangle ocb the unit outward normal will be along that direction okay will be parallel to the oa or the ox1 but oppositely directed now suppose we were considering the xyz coordinate system instead of x1 x2 x3 then our unit out the the unit vectors along the three coordinate axis would have been i i hat j hat k hat which we are all very familiar with but we are not doing it we are keeping it general in terms of x1 x2 and x3 correspondingly what we'll do is we'll say that the the unit vectors along o x1 will be e1 hat along o x2 will be e2 hat and along o x3 will be e3 hat so for the triangle ocb the unit outward normal will be along what direction will it not be equal to minus e1 hat the unit outward normal to ocb i repeat will be minus e1 hat it will be opposite to this so let me draw that this is minus e1 hat the traction vector it will be along some generic direction uh, let me just denote it like this so this traction vector will be dependent on minus e1 hat this you understand now if we go back a few slides you see that when we had the dependence on the minus n hat it happened to be equal to minus uh, the same traction vector but dependent on the positive unit outward normal so t vector of minus n hat is equal to minus of the t vector of plus n hat we'll use the same concept here also so this will be equal to minus t vector e1 hat and that will be considered to be equivalent to in the shorthand notation that we want to use as minus t vector subscript one within bracket next we consider the triangle oac so the unit outward normal to oac will be along minus e2 so So this is minus e2 hat and the traction vector again will be along some arbitrary direction and this you understand will be depending on minus e2 hat which should be equal to t vector sorry minus of e vector e2 hat and that should be equivalent to minus e vector subscript 2 okay all right sorry about that finally for the triangle oab will have the unit outward normal to be uh, parallel to ox3 but oppositely directed so it will be minus e3 hat and the traction vector will be along some generic direction 
so this is e vector minus e three vector equal to minus t vector depending on positive e three and that should be equal to minus t vector depending on three uh, uh, subscript three okay so since our plan is to apply this balance of linear momentum equation on this tetrahedron and i had said that there is a certain motivation for it you quickly note what is that motivation the motivation is actually very simple when we consider this kind of a tetrahedron we are deliberately considering surfaces like oab ocb and oac which happen to be perpendicular to the coordinate axis under consideration so our coordinate axis are ox1 ox2 and ox3 the triangle ocb have uh, the, the the geometrical figure of the tetrahedron is such that the one of the planes constituting the figure itself is perpendicular to the coordinate axis similarly for the two other triangles oab and oac this uh, this will actually enable us to uh, to establish the connection between the traction vector and the stress uh, components in a very nice fashion okay so in order to go forward uh, we do not actually have to worry about the calculations of these or the computations of these integrals because we are going to use a nice a very neat and clean mathematical trick to evaluate these uh, to these or these integrals okay so the trick is like this we are going to use the uh, what is referred to as the mean value theorem for integration so let me write that down very quickly for applying the the balance of linear momentum equation to the tetrahedron we'll use the the mean value theorem for integration and you will see uh, when we actually do this application uh, that this will that the mean value theorem for integration will actually make our life a lot easier but before we actually go to that step let me let us quickly uh, let me quickly state the mean value theorem for integration not like a mathematician but rather like an engineer in a very simple uh, uh, clear to understand fashion so what we'll do is uh, instead of considering this uh, this, uh, this overly complicated geometry let us first of all consider a simple one dimensional geometry uh, one dimensional domain maybe lying between x1 and x2 so forget about all this tetrahedron all this balance of linear momentum let's just consider the mean value theorem for integration uh, so suppose we are interested in evaluating this uh, this integral uh, of f of x over dx this definite integral of course where the domain lies between x1 and x2 now what the mean value theorem for integration is telling us is that this definite integral is simply the value of the integrand evaluated at some point within the domain between x1 and x2 inclusive of x1 and x2 multiplied by the size of the domain so the size of the domain for this one dimensional example is simply x2 minus x1 so you see what is this the first part f of x star is simply the value of the integrand evaluated at some specific point within the domain which is given to us between x1 and x2 note that x star could be uh, x1 could be x2 also okay so the the edges are allowed okay next uh, suppose we extend this one dimensional idea uh, uh, we, we extend from this one dimensional domain to a two dimensional domain so maybe next we consider a surface integration so let us consider this kind of a generic uh, position vector 
and integrated over this surface so what the mean value theorem of integration will tell us is this will be equal to the value of the function at some specific point the r vector star denotes the position vector of some specific point lying within the domain of consideration the within the s multiplied by the total surface area okay so uh, so you understand that here the x star it belongs to x1 comma x2 closed interval here the r vector star it belongs to s and similarly for a volume integral so these are some very generic uh, examples to illustrate the mean value theorem so this will be again the position vector uh, of some specific point within the volume the given volume multiplied by the total volume and with this idea uh, we will proceed towards the uh, towards the application of this balance of linear momentum statement uh, equation to this uh, to this tetrahedron and we'll do that in the next part of the lecture thank you